my name is James Carroll. I'm uh, uh, founder and CEO of Thor Photo Medicine. We're based in the UK and we have an American company as well, which is Thor Photo Medicine Inc. And our website is thorlaser.com and we do the whole body treatment system which has its own website which is called NovoThor, so that is NovoThor.com. What does it really mean? Well, so obviously photobiomodulation is a light therapy, uh, but you know my favorite introduction, you know, photobiomodulation is something that's been on uh, TV, it's been on Star Trek, uh, so when uh, on Star Trek, when somebody's injured and they get taken to sick bay, and the doctor gets out a laser beam, the doctor aims the laser at an injury, and the injury heals and regenerates instantly. So that is photobiomodulation. Uh, except it's not as instant as on TV. We get the idea. Uh, we shine light on people, and they get better more quickly. And we've been using lasers, which why has been called low-level laser therapy, but it doesn't have to be a laser in order to work. Also, light-emitting diodes work, so we use both. And that's where, really why we've moved away from low-level laser as a name to photobiomodulation. And I say we, I mean, that's we as an industry. Uh, and my friends and academic colleagues have, uh, have adopted this photobiomodulation name, and it's now an official uh, medical subject heading as used by the National Library of Medicine in the United States and on PubMed. Well, I suppose the broadest category is just to say inflammatory conditions, uh, but we now know that it has some effect on neuropathic problems, neuromuscular problems, ischemic problems, and then we keep, this we keep, it keeps expanding. I mean, when I first got involved, the only thing we really were aware of was this seemed to help wounds heal up more quickly, uh, and it's just kind of mushroom from there, from wounds to inflammatory conditions to neuropathic problems as I said, neuromuscular problems and now ischemic problems which is why it seems to work so well on problems in the brain. So that probably best explains its uh, effects on the brain is actually what it does for ischemia in the brain. Yeah, from the early days, uh, people wanted to verify, or just verify why it was working. So we were very much looking at a cellular level, uh, putting light in and seeing what it did for mitochondrial function, and it's taken some trying to get a closer idea of some of the, uh, the more molecular com uh, components that are affected by this light over time. So we were very much looking at a cellular level for all the benefits, and therefore the assumption has been and still is a, a broad assumption, you have to reach, the light has to reach cells in order to make them function better and for people to get better. But now we also are more aware of what it does for blood flow and how important blood flow is in people's healing and recovery. And, uh, and we're finding other distant effects now as well where uh, we were treating nerves and you can take proximal to an injury and you get pain relief, so you don't even have to treat the injury, you could treat proximal to an injury and get some pain relief as well, and trigger points which are not necessarily uh, on the, the apparent pathology, but they're sometimes they're away from it. So our previous focus on cells is kind of, we've kind of moved more broadly now to treating uh, for, for blood flow, treating for lymphatic flow, uh, treating the neuropathic component of pain uh, as well. I don't know if any of the big players are beginning to adopt it just yet. That's a bit uh, optimistic. Uh, I hope there will be big players, and that, that really means, uh, I think it's, uh, in a way, it's governments which are the, the main gatekeepers to something going mainstream. Research hospitals, like Harvard Medical School, so uh, there's, uh, uh, five different groups within the Harvard Medical School system, like Massachusetts General Hospital, and Brigham Women's Hospital, and the Harvard School of Public Health, uh, and others that are uh, putting some resources into understanding this therapy and also looking for grants to do research. So we are doing some research with uh, these groups around Harvard Medical School, and that's influential. New York University, uh, University of Pennsylvania, uh, uh, some of them. Uh, so. 
St. Jude's Hospital, I mean, it's, I'm afraid I'm, American, I'm mentioning big American institutes, I'm afraid. Uh, there is good work going on here in Australia, uh, and I've now got to try and remember the name of the institutions which are getting involved in this. But there are researchers here in Sydney uh, who are working on eye diseases of the eye, working on Parkinson's disease, uh, and uh, so they're, they're, they're ploughing their own furrow. You know, I mean, everything on its own scale. I mean, relatively, Australia is a small population compared to the United States. So, it's, of course, you expect bigger projects over there. Oh, well, I don't know about astronauts, and I know NASA was interested in that, and I know there is more NASA interest. I am, um, we are, we've been lucky enough to, uh, indirectly to receive some NASA money uh, just recently in the last few weeks. Uh, for a project uh, through a university. So we're supplying the equipment for some research for NASA, uh, but this is still uh, laboratory-based work, not human clinical trials yet. So it's early days for that, and it's nothing, nothing I can talk about at the moment, but we'll get to that. Um, yeah, but absolutely, um, Olympians, uh, Nike are um, enthusiastic users of this. Uh, their middle and long distance runners all have to uh, do, uh, uh, to use our whole body Novathor treatment uh, at least three times a week. So that's, a, I suppose, another feather in our cap. Uh, yes, so NFL, uh, NHL, NBA. Again, sorry I'm mentioning all these American uh, organisations. I don't know of any Australian teams which are using it. But yes, absolutely, the, 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 big, uh, the big sports teams in the United States are using it. Manchester City in the UK have been using it. Uh, well, the obvious ones we know from doing tests is that, they, first of all, they have very little appreciation of dose, uh, which is a mixture of the light intensity and time, and usually they fail on intensity. We find people uh, making devices that they believe are within the normal effective range but actually uh, there's a lot of ignorance around uh, beam measurement as well so we, a lack of appreciation of the required intensity and how to actually measure these things uh, seems to be the main problem and having stable output so the devices when they're turned on maintain stable outputs and don't lose power over time because if you overdrive these components they age very quickly and then start to fail assuming they were even given the right power to start with. And we, we see crazy problems. There's this, uh, we, we find it unbelievable that people who are designing and building devices don't appreciate that when we talk about the power of light of uh, treating somebody, we're talking about the light that reaches the patient. Some people seem to think it's the amount of electricity that comes from a wall. But for example, these lamps on the ceiling above us, which we tungsten light bulbs, you know, they may draw, say, each one may draw 100 watts on the wall, but only 5 watts of light comes out of it because lamps are not 100% efficient. And we see devices where people think that the power of their device is the electricity drawn from the wall, which is what we say about lamps. You know, it's a 100 watt light bulb. It only delivers five, uh, 5 watts of light. When we talk about light, we talk about how much light actually comes out and is delivered to the patient. And I say we, but any uh, physicist, anybody who's in... Um, uh, so uh, biomedical world will understand that, but it seems that a lot of people making devices don't appreciate that, and so they're not getting what they think they're getting when they're buying them. Well, it's a whole body treatment system, so it's a device, we've got two sizes, so two meters and a sort of a two and a half meter length device, and it's uh, a meter wide and it's double sided, you feel like when you turn this thing, it's got this, I mean, the true meaning of the word awesome, an, an immense amount of light coming towards you. And you turn this thing on, you feel like you might be climbing into something that's like, I don't know, you get back to barbecue yourself, I suppose. But uh, an immense sort of double-sided uh, George Foreman grill, except it's not hot, is it? It's just light. Uh, and so uh, you climb inside this thing, lie down, uh, preferably naked or just in your underwear, so the more of the skin you expose, the better it gets. gets. And basically, it gives your entire uh, body a bit of a recharge, really, so you get light in and your cells make more energy, ATP, the, the free radicals and the oxidative stress that lead to chronic degenerative diseases and the aging process seems to be reduced. And 
judging by all the blood tests that we've done, uh, we can see that the markers for inflammation and, uh, uh, are, and oxidative stress are going down. Yes, so the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence in the UK is the body that evaluate medicines for the National Health Service and will recommend or not uh, what treatments uh, should be uh, delivered to patients in our National Health Service. And yeah, last May, after a long uh, process, uh, they finally ended up recommending uh, the treatment for cancer patients. It's for treating the side effects of radiotherapy and chemotherapy. So if they, these attempts to kill cancer don't just kill cancers, they do have a lot of collateral damage on people's bodies, they get a lot of inflammation and pain, uh, and we've successfully demonstrated this treatment is uh, effective in reducing uh, the inflammation and the ulceration inside the mouth as a result of high-dose chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And what it means now is it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a big positive rubber stamp, a five-star uh, five gold stars really for this therapy because uh, NICE, uh, the institute in the UK, is well regarded around the world and they've given us a, you know, a strong mark of approval. It means that I think we can uh, say with some confidence that this therapy has arrived as a mainstream treatment and over time it's going to be uh, a, a first line medical treatment for cancer patients in the UK. Well, what I've noticed is that the, uh, the oral medicine specialists who've been pushing for this uh, are, tend to be in a very global group and very collaborative. And so I do know Australian oral medicine specialists who have been collaborators in uh, the research of photobiomodulation in the world of oral mucositis. They're championing it. The people from France, from the United States, from Brazil uh, are all supporting this. They are very collaborative, very communicative and the, the, the recommendation in the UK, uh, it seems like only a matter of time before Australia uh, will, will adopt a, partly because of what they see in NICE and partly because there's a lot of strong advocacy in Australia for this amongst oral medicine specialists. Yes, yeah, so, um, yes, it's, I mean, most of the developed world is suffering from some uh, to some degree an opioid crisis. Uh, the need to try and give people some comfort uh, when all the other pain medications are running out might have been a bit short-sighted because uh, whilst, I mean opioids don't really relieve pain, they just change your attitude towards your pain really and uh, it's, it's, there's no way out of them really, there's no easy way. People become, they're addictive, you need to keep taking more and more in order for them to have any uh, apparent benefit for you and then you get stuck in this cycle and it's costing hundreds of million, millions of dollars uh, to governments and uh, healthcare organizations uh, for these people who are uh, stuck and dependent on these things to kind of live except that it ends up causing a lot of social problems and additional health problems for them. And there seems to be no way out of it. So uh, widely I think it's agreed now that, and, and particularly in dentistry I mean, where dentists have been prescribing plenty of opioids over time um, and you know, some of those people will end up becoming dependent on these eventually at some point. Uh, so it, it's critical for patients, it's critical for, the, for, uh, for healthcare systems, the costs and the quality of life. Uh, alternatives are essential and this therapy does seem to work uh, where other pain medication doesn't work. And I think that's really because it doesn't just take away the pain, it actually helps people heal. So uh, I have an interest in a company which makes a photobiomodulation device specifically for diseases of the eye and that we've demonstrated in a randomized uh, placebo-controlled clinical trial uh, that it is effective in improving visual acuity in patients with dry age-related macular degeneration. And so this is a breakthrough because nothing else is proven to work on dry AMD. And so we've shown it in our first small trial and we're now uh, conducting trials across the world who demonstrated in multiple different populations so these are multi-centered studies uh, that this is a solution and it's costing governments you know millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in social care because these people lose independent living so that's our 
uh, our, our next breakthrough, and the breakthrough is already in progress. So we're winning that one. We're winning the, opi the uh, oral mucositis one. And then opioids, I think, is the, is the next one we're working on. Uh, so it's early days for oral mucositis. So our congressional briefing in the United States was sort of getting, making, taking advantage of the, the, the political concern. And um, politics does seem to play a role in the, uh, uh, in the adoption uh, uh, of some medical therapies. And to have uh, US Congress uh, and uh, their, um, their health advisors supporting uh, the use of light is going to be very important for us getting grants to, to fund trials to demonstrate uh, to the policymakers and to the American insurance system that this is a safe and effective way to treat and avoid the future use of opioids.